Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another tutorial episode of Hearts of Iron 4 with the Total War mod as one of you guys asked me in the past to make this tutorial video uh, it's now the time to discuss about land doctrines um, now before you keep going on watching I have to tell you that this video will not be a video tutorial about uh, okay guys so if you have this template if and if you choose this doctrine you will get these stats and these bonuses and these bonuses no um, I, I would like to just give you a uh, an overview of each of the five, let's say, uh, land doctrines, which nation benefits more from which land doctrine, and also my personal opinion about each of the branches uh, of each uh, land doctrine. And before going, also, um, I would like to answer one question that um, I think it may come up in the comments. So let's. Um, Let's tackle it right now. Um, some of you may ask me, is it worth to change land doctrine between nations? Like, I'm, I'm, I mean that if you pick a major nation that already has um, one land doctrine selected, like in this case uh, Germany, uh, and you may ask, okay, but what about, what if I want to go to the superior firepower doctrine? Um, in my opinion, it is not worth it and why is this because as you can see if you're new to the channel and you're new to the mod uh, the total war mod um, still uses the old system of the doctrines land naval and air doctrines so you have to research them and if you look at the cost meaning that the cost uh, is indicated in the number of days that it, um, it takes I mean each land doctrine uh, takes 392 days so it's more than a year I think it's uh, it's like 13 months and okay with these bonuses I do I do have uh, only 373 so it's still one year and uh, 10 days I think and yeah of course if you if you spend let's say 40 um, of army experience you can always reduce the um, you, can, you can gain 40% of, uh, bonus speed to slow down, to let's say, to ac accelerate the research uh, by yeah, 40%. So in this case, uh, as is as it is labeled here, uh, 270 days. So yeah, personal opinion, it is not uh, worth changing the land doctrine, uh, especially because there are some countries like uh, France. Uh, or Italy that do have modifiers that uh, where is that oh yeah there they do have some modifiers that um, do impact the speed of research of the land doctrines uh, now if, if you see here in uh, in France you have this minus 50% which means that one land doctrine can take up to two years yeah two years years and for two years you have one research, research law that is stuck in researching one freaking bloody land doctrine so um, if you let's say I think France starts with the Grand Battleground doctrine and if you're like yeah I wanna go to the motorized the um how it's called the mobile warfare uh, no just don't just stick to what you have and try to make the best of what you have now let's go to the first of the uh, land doctrines that is in, in of course this is my favorite one uh, the mobile warfare now unlike the vanilla game mobile warfare does not have any more the division speed bonus but um, this branch of the land doctrines uh, still can give you some interesting uh, options if you are playing as in this case uh, Germany or um, also, uh, I know this is weird, but Italy. If you play as Italy, I think that uh, there is a uh, branch. Yeah, it, there is this branch here, the innovative theories, that um, we will give you uh, Messe, 
and if I'm not mistaken, actually we can have a look at we can have a look at it uh, on on live. Let's say uh, Messe does have some uh, research um, bonuses. If I'm not mistaken, nope. Uh, where is he? Yeah, uh, Messe does have the mobile warfare expert that gives you an uh, extra research speed bonus to the mobile um, warfare branch. And so, yeah, Germany benefits from that. Uh, also, because Germany has uh, Fingudarian that has this this very same bonus, and Italy, of course, if if you play as Italy and you go along the uh, innovative theories um, uh, branch of the uh, focus tree. Now, why um, Germany and, and Italy benefits from that? Well, because uh, Germany and Italy... Germany for sure. Italy, if you play it correctly, can be turned into, uh, let's say, a tank-oriented nation. Um, I did a series uh, quite some time ago about about Italy and I could demonstrate to you guys that in single player uh, by okay by exploiting a little bit the AI the British AI the UK AI uh, if you can have a small uh, tank born army you can actually win the war in North Africa and defeat and kick the allies out of North Africa with your uh, tank and motorized uh, division. Now, mobile warfare focuses, as, as the name says, on uh, mobile troops. The first three, uh, brand, uh, the first three, I would say, um, uh, le let's call them tiers. Okay, the first three tiers of the of the branch basically provide you some uh, planning speed bonuses and also some interesting abilities like this um, shock maneuver that. Let's say it's good. It's the only downside is this extra army fuel consumption of 25%. Uh, that it's. Um, I mean, if you're not prepared, it, it can hurt quite a bit. And also, uh, you need to have a very strong industrial ca capacity. I would say behind this, because uh, you you will need to produce a lot of transport and uh, utility vehicles. Uh, then you have the delay that focuses just on the organization of the uh, infantry and uh, garrisons and so on uh, and so forth. And then you have elastic defense that increases basically some stats of your uh, armor. Now, uh, which of these two branches you, you, you can pick? Well, it, it depends on your play style. Um, the way I would play a canonical Germany and I'm saying this because the veterans on my channel know very well that I did, I think, twice or even three times a challenge with Germany in which I would have a motorized Wehrmacht only. And oh my god, that was a ton of fun. And with, if, if you if you like to play with a motorized Wehrmacht only, well, of course, you have to go along the mobile infantry. Namely because it gives you this... Um, max speed plus seven percent and oh my god this max speed uh joined with these um improved track one um improved track two and um uh, improved track three uh it, it makes your motorized and mechanized divisions a a real badass seriously really freaking badass and uh, yeah, so if you have, if you, if you like to have more of a motorized and mechanized army, I would go for this one. Personally, with a canonical Germany, I would go uh, with the Blitzkrieg uh, tiers because um, these two uh, tiers will provide some interesting bonuses to your tanks. And in a canonical Germany, I would use tanks to break through the enemy lines and to form uh, pockets. The motorized infantry. Will just ha will just have the task of uh, let's say securing the flanks of the pockets, and the uh, footborne infantry will have the task of just clearing up the pocket. And if you go down um, the Blitzkrieg, you have some again some bonuses to motorized and mechanized. You have the uh, Kampfgruppe that uh, it's good for this supply grace. Um, of plus 24 hours if you have the tactic of 
uh, overwhelming uh, fire. And now, mobile defense or uh, modern Blitzkrieg? Um, from my point of view, from my experience, if you go on mobile defense, it, it means that things are not going good. And it means that basically you are losing the war. <laughs> because as Germany, your goal is to defeat uh, the Soviet Union and then turn your attention uh, on the Allies. Let's say, if it's 1943 and uh, you are struggling against the Soviets, um, the war is lost. Pretty much just like what happened uh, in real life. So if you are forced to, to select this, that provides uh, as you can see, entrenchment speed of plus 30%, uh, some soft attack and uh, organization, and uh, it's nice to have this close air support attack, but then uh, if you have this um, uh, tactical withdrawal, which only increases the organization of the infantry and light infantry by 3 and 2, um, I mean, things are really going rough for you. So I would not go this branch unless you are really really facing some uh, desperate situations. I would rather go with uh, modern uh, Blitzkrieg also because these um, uh, uh, this branch gives you some bonuses to uh, uh, soft attack of uh, infantry and medium um, artillery. Uh, why I want to stress on medium artillery, because uh, if you watched my previous tutorial video about the divisional templates, uh, you may remember that I told you to um, use a lot of medium artillery in your divisions if you want to have some good uh, all-round uh, infantry divisions. Um, the back and blow again provides some uh, attack, uh, hard attack bonuses for tanks, and then you have this uh, modern Blitzkrieg that basically um, improves the uh, shock maneuver. Uh, again, you, you need to have some pretty good um, uh, fuel stocks because this is it is getting really um, fuel thirsty. And one interesting um, option that this tier offers is this uh, organization loss when moving. That it's minus minus a percent. It's it's always good. And uh, it's also good to have this plus 5% of uh, close um, air support attack. And of course, all these bonuses to, to tanks uh, are always good for a, an army that is always poised uh, on the uh, offense. And so this is basically my favorite. What I would go, what, what I would choose uh, if I want to play a uh, canonical Germany. Um, or, of course, a canonical uh, Italy. Now, the superior firepower doctrine. This is, the, from my experience and in, in my opinion, uh, the land doctrine that you can use if you play uh, the United States or even other nations like um, India. Uh, Germany can do it, even though still I would prefer mobile warfare uh, for Germany. And if you want to risk even the UK, even though for the UK I would rather choose the Grand uh, Battle Plan Doctrine. Uh, why Spear of Firepower? Well, because as the name says, uh, this doctrine emphasizes the role of uh, artillery. And the first three tiers are just, let's say, uh, common, they don't add anything um, special. Uh, the only downside is this, maybe this is the suppressive barrage that increases the supply consumption by 4%. Um, if you play like I like to play with the hardest difficulty settings, this can be like a pain in the butt because uh, already you do have a plus 10% of supply consumption and having this extra 4% uh, can make things a bit difficult. Uh, but but still, I mean, it's if you play normally, I think it's it, it, it's still uh, bearable. Uh, delay is just uh, normal, and the mobile defense it, it just increases the 
uh, defense uh, percentage of your mobile troops and the uh, light uh, infantry. Now, disperse support or in integrated support. Um, stick to disperse support. And again, if you've watched the previous video, you know why. Because disperse disperse support uh, provides bonuses to medium artillery and the overwhelming firepower further gives you soft attack to medium artillery namely you have a plus seven percent and a plus five percent so a total of plus twelve percent of soft attack and because the ai uh let's say the majority of the divisions that, that you will face are um infantry infantry divisions uh by sticking uh soft attack you will be able to break the enemy divisions uh say much uh easily in, in a much easier way why you should not choose the integrated support well because the first tier only uh provides soft attack to heavy artillery it also increases the organization loss when you're moving i think that this is because to mimic all the problems in uh, arranging the heavy artillery batteries that you know divisions has to, has to have to move and organize and everything and then you have the uh, regimental combat teams that yeah that they they give you this plus six percent but i mean six versus twelve it's, it's not a big deal but it's fifty percent of less soft attack that you that you could get if you if, if you would choose these two uh let's say tiers and now the um i think the, the most um Difficult path, uh, air land battle or shock and awe. Now this depends on which is your play style and which is uh, the approach that you have. If you focus more on having a large army, uh, then you should go with shock and awe because this branch basically provides some bonuses, soft attack, uh, recognizes bonuses, uh, max planning organization HP and again soft and out attack to the army um, I'm not a big fan of this and the only reason is because in the total war mod um, creating divisions is extremely expensive so unless you're playing the the US that you can spam tons of crazy divisions uh, go for this one personally I'm a big fan of close air support so I would choose the um, air land uh, battle and the first two tiers are, are, are I would say nothing really uh, let's say impressive in terms of bonuses um, maybe the tactical control that gives you the uh, shock attack which is like a weak version of the um, uh, shock maneuver and uh, the only difference is that soft attack this shock attack also includes includes cavalry and uh, artillery units and I, I think that in my opinion the the, the best uh, research is uh, this one here the airland battle that it has doubled the close air support attack compared to the modern blitzkrieg and uh, this plus 15 percent of land combat air superiority so um, I, I think I will make a tutorial on, on how to be victorious in the total war mode and in my opinion if you want to go along the uh, superior firepower superior firepower doctrine this branch is what you should play uh, to be victorious in your campaigns uh the grand battle plan doctrine um this let's say land doctrine is very useful for nations that uh they have to be on the defensive at the beginning of the game like for instance the united united kingdom or maybe even poland and ideally france if you can survive as france um italy maybe uh, and I would say Japan can stick to this but then focus more on the infiltration branch and yeah so as I mentioned 
uh, if you have to defend some land at the beginning, uh, and then you know that you will launch a counter-offensive um, anytime, uh, then stick to the Grand Balaplan Doctrine. The um, first four tiers, they, they just provide you some uh, planning and uh, defenses bonuses. Uh, you have the Last Stand ability that gives you this very juicy uh, a 15% of entrenchment and then you have this uh, entrenchment speed of plus 25% that's incredibly uh, useful if you have let's say to to fall back and uh, you need to hurry up in digging up trenches and dugouts um, you have very importantly this minus 5% of supply consumption guys this is amazing this is really useful especially i think in uh, regions like uh, africa like china like in the china like a jungle like uh, maybe even uh, siberia and far eastern russia where uh, the supply situation and the railways are not that great um you have the prepared defense that again boosts your uh, defense and also the or organization of your infantry and then you have the grand assault that just gives you some uh, attack uh, capabilities and then also this ability of the extra supplies that gives this minus 20% of supply consumption that is, is incredibly useful again in supply poor uh, regions of the world and now assault versus infiltration the assault branch is good for nations uh, that are highly industrialized like for instance i'm thinking at i don't know uh the uk um, if you play as italy italy i mean if, if you use the uh, grand Balaplan doctrine as italy uh, i would say canada uh, india if you use the um, uh, let us call it the, the the gbp yeah the gbp and and so on and so forth and this is basically uh, when you know that you will go on the offensive after having absorbed the initial offensive of your enemy mainly of the axis powers um, uh, I mentioned in this industrialized countries because uh, you will have the industrial capability to raise uh, mechanized motorized and uh, armor divisions. I'm not going to go through all of this, but very quickly, um, there is one. Um, yeah, there is this one, the branch iter operation that has this ground support plus seven percent. Now, this, unlike the close air support attack, this increases the mission efficiency of your close air support so it's it it can be useful if you have if you, if you plan to have a lot of close air support flying uh, above your uh, motorized and mechanized and armored boys uh, marching through the enemy uh, territory um, you also have the shock attack just like in the uh, airland battle and um, yeah, the C3I, uh, I think it's good for uh, your um, command power increase and the command power gain uh, multiplier uh, in case you want to spam more of the uh, previous uh, abilities, especially the uh, extra um, supplies. Now, the infiltration is good for nations uh, that, that are not really uh, focusing on tanks like uh, Japan because the infiltration branch focuses on having an infantry born army that is focusing or focused on the offensive and again um, you can have this a uh, very nice um, bonuses uh, the central planning the most important bonus of the central planning is the division attrition minus 10 percent that is incredibly incredibly useful again in uh, supply poor regions uh, of the world 
you have also the infiltration of salt that, that reduces by 3% the supply, supply consumption. So again, you have now a uh, minus 8%. That is, again, very, very, very useful. You have the night assault tactics, tactics that is very good for this plus 20% of land night attack. I mean, if, if you want to, to focus also, uh, let's say, on this branch, uh, when you play as the UK or as Canada, India, you can go. I would just prefer to, to go to the uh, assault because it's to me it's let's say easier. Uh, maybe if you're running slightly low on manpower, you can you could go on infiltration and if you plan to attack also, uh, for instance, uh, at uh, at night. And uh, yeah, the other two are just. Uh, Tiers that provides bonuses to infantry, mechanized, and uh, reconnaissance. So nothing too uh, special here. Now, the MAD, the Mass Assault Doctrine. This is, uh, I think, the favorite um, uh, land doctrine for uh, the Soviet Union. Um, maybe I would say even China and uh, communist China. Uh, this is similar, uh, let's say, the first three tiers are similar to the Grand Battle Plan Doctrine uh, with the only difference that it focuses a lot on infantry and on having um, cheap infantry because especially the, the, the first two tiers you can see that um, <coughs> they reduce uh, by four and two respectively the um, infantry equipment requ requirement that your infantry and in this case um, the garrisons and the militia uh, sorry uniforms infantry equipment and uniforms that your uh, infantry and light infantry will need per battalion um, is not too much but it's you know it, it can be useful especially as a Soviet Union that uh, you have this you start with a massive deficit of uh, infantry um, equipment so it's, uh, it's it's good and it's also good because it, it gives you this plus four percent of uh, reinforced rate that this is crucial in battle if you want to make sure that you have enough divisions in reserve and you want to bring those divisions uh, from the reserve to the main front line in time before your front line uh, collapses. Uh, pocket defense, it's very nice for this supply grace of plus 48 hours. Um, honestly, I'm a bit skeptical about this because usually when uh, some of your troops will get encircled, uh, it's just a matter of, I would say, minutes before they will just disappear uh, from the map. And then you have the defense in depth that provides you, let's say, some bonuses similar to the Grand Battle Plan. They are not that great, but still, um, they are still useful, especially if you're playing as the Soviet Union and uh, it's 1941 and you, uh, you want to have, let's say, at least these three doctrines researched uh, by the time that the Germans and the Axis arrive knocking uh, at your door. And again, these two branches remind me a little bit of the of these two branches of the grand uh, battle plan. Now, the deep battle, in my opinion, is the favorite choice um, for the Soviet Union because again, you first defend and then you build up your uh, mechanized uh, army and then you used a mechanized army to. Uh, penetrate the enemy lines and, as always, make pockets and annihilate them and uh, just rinse and repeat. Um, some key features of this branch are, for instance, this uh, minus 3% um, uh, of um, supply consumption. That is, again, very, very good. Uh, and then you have... You have this no, not one step back uh, doctrine that. So it's good if you are, let's say, in a kind of a, of a desperate situation that um, 
the enemy is attacking you when you least expect it and you really want to hold that position uh, again you may need to have some really big backup of equipment because uh, as you can see this will uh, this ability will shift the damage suffered from the organization uh, to the uh, strength so the HP of your uh, divisions another very good uh, tier is this vast offensive because of this uh, minus 3% uh, supply consumption and then you have again bonuses for tanks bonuses in the amount of infantry equipment you have again the shock attack and then you have the um, air barrage that is uh, it's quite interesting it reduces the offense and it bonus it gives bonuses to the uh, cast ground support um, I, yeah I mean it's 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 okay I like more this minus 10% of organization loss when moving and the plus 1% of uh, reinforce rate but uh, still I am not a big fan of losing the offensive power minus 25% just to get plus 10% of close of uh, close air support ground support uh, efficiency I mean it depends also on your la on your air doctrines uh, if you have the uh, branch that gives you bonuses to your uh, to your close air support then it could be worth uh, picking the air barrage uh, ability uh, the mass mobilization is uh, good for China. It's very good for China and also for communist China because it basically, as NM says, it focuses on infantry. Um, if you play as China and you play against Japan, uh, you should you should just spam cheap infantry divisions and the mass mobilization branch is what you need uh, for that. You have this minus 10% of supply consumption that is massive that is massive that's that's what you need if you want to hold out as China you have uh, bonuses to infantry and again a reduction of um, equipment uh, planning and infantry bonuses you have these um, infantry recovery rates again and the soft attacks you have the uh, guerrilla, guerrilla tactics that is again very good for the um, uh, entrenchment speed you have the um, mass barrage that again it's it can be useful if you have if you plan to let's say push back Japan and, and, and you are beginning to to get a strong industry and you want to produce uh, again medium size uh, sized artillery to add to your division uh, mainly because of this uh, offense 10% um, and this uh, strength damage taken of minus 50% and then you have a last tier the Molotov, co Molotov cocktail that gives you this plus 30% of um, hard attack and last but not least we have I think the most unique land doctrine uh, in the total war mod that is asymmetric warfare um, this doctrine can also be taken by China uh, maybe if you are feeling less confident with uh, the mass assault doctrine um, asymmetric warfare uh, focuses exclusively on uh, uh, on being on the defensive and in my opinion another nation that benefits from this is Finland uh, why Finland? Well, because you have a crap, crappy population. Uh, no offense to all the Finns watching this video, but you, you don't have a big uh, manpower base. You don't have a big in the industry base, and you have to defend yourself against um, your Soviet neighbor. So, in my opinion, um, even though I never played as Finland, um, if you play as Finland. Uh, I would go with the asymmetric uh, warfare because it gives again the ability of the extra supplies and then it, and then it, it reduces the amount of uh, equipment 
uh, that, that you need for your infantry uh, and cavalry battalions. Uh, it it, it uh, increases the uh, reconnaissance and also this territorial pride defense of plus 3%. Uh, it's nothing big, but it's better than, than, than having nothing, basically. And I like this advanced guerrilla warfare because it uh, reduces the uh, enemy air support of the uh, air superiority, basically. So even if the enemy has 100% control of, of the skies, uh, it will have, let's say, a minus 5% of the bonus of having this green air, uh, since I like to refer to it as, as, uh, as the green uh, air. And also it, it increases the uh, resistance speed. And yeah, I mean, uh, if you play as China and it, it, you know you're preparing to lose a lot of territory, then I think this could also be uh, the, the branch that you need uh, to use. Now, I would say, I would say between the, the, the left branch and the right branch, I would go with the left uh, branch because uh, the, the right branch, the Motti tactics, even though I know this sounds very Finnish, and I mean, the Motti tactics is the tactics that the Finns used in the Winter War. It does not give you bonuses to infantry, unless if you play as Finland, you want to spam an army of light infantry divisions. Then, in this case, it's totally fair to use uh, the right branch, uh, because of this bonus and also uh, because of the uh, damage um, to the uh, enemy garrisons um, in your uh, occupied uh, territories. I'm more of a big fan of the camouflage because again of the uh, entrenchment speed um, uh, plus of the plus 25 percent of entrenchment speed and also because of the uh, minus 10 percent of uh, land combat uh, enemy air uh, support and of course the factory bomb vulnerability it's very good if you uh, play with the dispersed industry that uh, this will further reduce the uh, strategic bombing efficiency against your uh, factories. Uh, delay and uh, Molotov co cocktails provide the same bonuses of the other uh, tiers, let's say. And now, night operations or offensive operations. Um, I would say both are good. It's, it, it, it really depends on the situation that you are facing. Like, if it's Finland, and you're planning to retake some lost territory, then I would really go for um, the um, offensive operation, uh, namely because of the um, plus 25% of hard attack and piercing attack of the lighter infantry and this territorial pride offense of plus 10%, and that's very good if you want to uh, attack enemy divisions that are occupying one of your core uh, states. And so night operations is the same of the night uh, assault tactics, uh, land night attack plus 20%. And last but not least, assault breakthrough or armored operations. Uh, again, this depends on what you have in your army. If you manage to, let's say, build up a one or two tank divisions, then I would definitely go for armored operations. If you play, let's say, as Finland, I would maybe go for assault breakthrough that gives you this plus three percent of uh, division attack, and uh, because of the tactic of breakthrough, and it gives plus eight percent of uh, overall army breakthrough and yeah I mean that's it for this tutorial I, I hope you guys found this, this tutorial interesting entertaining and I hope you did learn something new and if you have an opinion that is different from what I just told you in this video 
please let me know in the comments below because I'm always eager to to read your tactics, your strategies, what you do, what you don't do, what you think I should do, or what uh, you what you do in the, in that I don't know. And it you know it's always good to have more information. And yeah, as always, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And I'll see you all guys in the next episode.